starting to. Not all. Good morning. But working on. Yeah. <laughs> I call to order the State and Local Government Finance and Policy Committee meeting to order for March 24th, 2023. We do have a quorum present. Um, Representative Kraft, welcome back to the committee. Good to be back. Since we heard um, your, you answered questions and discussed this bill in detail the last time it was here. Yeah. Uh, I am going to renew my motion that, do you have an amendment? Yeah. Yes, there is an amendment. Okay. So we, I will renew my motion that House File 2677 be re-referred to transportation. Is that correct? That's correct. And so um, the bill is before us. If you would please speak to the A7 amendment. Yeah, the A7 amendment is incorporating um, a number, a bunch of stakeholder work that's been done. And in fact, I... In speaking about the bill last time, I spoke about many of the things that are in the A7 amendment. Okay. Um, members, do you have, or do you have any testifiers? No. All right. And does anybody from the um, public wish to speak to this bill, House File 2677, or the amendment? Seeing none, we'll go to members' questions. Madam Chair. Yes, Lead Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to the author, have the uh, concerns for Metro Cities been addressed in your amendment? Uh, Representative Kraft. Um, Madam Chair, Representative Nash, uh, I don't want to speak for Metro Cities. The amendment reflects an attempt to incorporate their feedback. I would imagine they would say that uh, it's moving quickly and maybe needs some time to fully digest it, but the intention of this is to go into the transportation omnibus, so there's still more time to work that. Lead Nash. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. I do see Ms. Nauman if she wanted to address that, or we could just, I could encourage my swarm of members to vote no. <laughs> Ms. Nauman, would you like to come approach and then please state your name for the record thank you. and begin your statement? <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, Patricia Nauman with uh, Executive Director of Metro Cities. Um, thank you for the time today, and I appreciate Representative Kraft's comments. I think it's fair to say that uh, Metro Cities does. Um, we're still trying to digest the significance, basically, of the bill and the amendment. Our concern does remain with putting um, this level of, or this type of policy into state statute under the Land Use Planning Act and sort of that area of law with respect to cities and their work with the Metropolitan Council on the requirements for local comprehensive plans as they, as they are developed every 10 years. Um, so we look forward to working with the the author of the bill and legislators as it moves forward to see if we can try to address those concerns. Thank you very much. And Representative Kraft, just as a, a fellow suburbanite, I would say to you, um, our cities really appreciate the cooperation that we do um, with Met Council. So I would ask that we please try to find some peace in the valley when you take the bill to transportation. Um, with that, members, I will move the A7 amendment. All of those, in, oh. Representative Nadeau to the A7? Um, no, I will wait. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, so I'll move the A7 amendment to be adopted to House File 2677. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, um, 2677 is amended with the A7 amendment. Um, Representative Nadeau, did you have a question? You know, I, I don't really have a question. I just have, um, you know, we talked the other day mm -hmm. really well. I, I, I want to reiterate um, that some of the cities that are in the Met Council jurisdiction are going to have a climate action plan, um, and they're going to be able to implement it easy. Um, other cities are not going to have it. It's going to be a, a difficult thing to implement, and it's going to be costly. Um, the cities that I represent, um, are going to be reticent to want to implement such a thing. Um, and I would really, really, really like you to reconsider putting this in, um, in the Met Council's jurisdiction as a system plan um, for all the reasons we talked about before. So I just want to get that on the record one more time. Thank you very much. And Lead Nash, you had one short comment. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will echo what Representative Nadeau just sh shared. Um, the cities in my my district would be beyond reticent. Um, I think you can, if there's reticent plus, uh, that might be a thing. Uh, I can tell you that I, I don't believe this is necessarily tenable from their perspective. I will echo the concerns of Metro Cities. 
uh, and remind uh, my colleagues across the aisle that in years past when Metro Cities would bring concern on a bill, that was an almost certain death knell, and I would encourage that that uh, tradition continues. Thank you. Thank you, Lead Nash. Any other comments? Representative Bonner. Very briefly, I just want to say um, thank you, and I appreciate that you are working with our cities. I know we're kind of echoing that same thing. I think many of us at this table are getting some feedback from cities that have concerns. So I do appreciate that you are actively <laughs> engaging uh, with our cities and our, our folks uh, to make sure that we can uh, make the bill um, better um, and make sure that it, it fits. Um, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Any closing comments, Representative Kraft? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I, I really appreciate all the comments on this. I will say, coming from a city myself, sort of having served on city council for three years, I'm very sympathetic to those concerns um, and am endeavoring and will to make this as, fit this in as, uh, in as simple, direct uh, a way as possible. I do have to note, though, that we are in a once in a humanity kind of crisis that we need to address. And we need systemic change. And uh, systemic change is hard. And often what happens with when you're trying to make systemic change is the system, even unknowingly, fights back. And so I, I am going to do everything I can to build this in, but with the kind of the North Star that we do need to make progress on these areas. So um, with that, I would uh, appreciate your support in moving this back to transportation. Thank you. And with that, I will renew my motion that House File 2677, as amended, be re-referred to the Transportation Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. The motion prevails, and you are on your way to transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we're going to have Representative Herr, and this is the pensions bill. <clears throat> Since you're on the committee, Representative Herr, if you would like to um, make your motion. Madam Chair, I would like to uh, move that uh, House File 2950, um, which will be amended, <laughs> be referred, re, uh, re referred to the uh, to Ways and Means. The general register. The general register. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I understand you have a DE? Yes, Madam Chair, I do have a DE. All right. Would you like to move that the DE be before us? Yes, I move the DE to be before the committee. Thank you. And then would you like to uh, tell us about a high level uh, explanation of the DE, please? And Madam Chair, maybe if we could just um, adopt the DE because that's the bulk of what the, uh, the omnibus uh, policy is, uh, bill is. So then we can, I can just go over briefly what it is that after that. Uh, members, to get the bill uh, in the condition that the author would like, I um, move adoption of the DE. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh. Was there a question? Yeah, just to be clear, is that the A23-0097? Normally it starts with DE, so I just want to... It, it does say delete everything, so I'm assuming that's the right one. I'm seeing nods. Is that okay. correct? Uh, Madam Chair, that is correct. This says uh, pensions does it just a little bit different. So it is the A, just to be clear, that I'm moving the A23-0097, which is the DE uh, that puts the bill in the order that it needs to be for us to have discussion on it. Thank you very much. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion prevails, and um, the, the um, amendment is adopted. Thank you to the DE, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, uh, and uh, this, the Pensions Commission is always a, a commission that operates a little bit differently. It operates like a committee, but it's uh, a commission. And we've done a lot of really hard work, bipartisan work. We meet with uh, our Senate partners in the House, which makes up Democrats and Republicans in both chambers. And we've worked really hard to put this uh, omnibus policy bill together. Uh, this DE amendment is a compilation of 15 bills and substantive uh, amendments considered by the Legislative Commission on Pensions and Retirement, which met on February 6th, 20th, and 27th, March 16th and 20th, and it was approved by the Commission at the meeting on March 22nd. Um, what this bill really does is it's actually just a technical bill that includes uh, everything um, that uh, each of the plan has asked for us to either um, update or correct uh, things that we are trying to uh, potentially fix because they have maybe have been sitting out there for a little longer and we might have been uh, looking at one-off cases and we were looking for fixes uh, within the plans in order to to ensure that everyone is treated the same. This includes everything from, you know, Democrats to Republican uh, um, policy fixes. And so 
Uh, I, each of the plans, so there's MSRS, TRA, PERA, and the St. Paul Teachers, uh, was included into this one omnibus bill, and the policy impacts uh, each one of those differently. But you know, there are some changes that uh, also go across the board. And so I could go into the details of it. I have Ms. Lincheski here, but I do want this committee to be rest assured that this passed unanimously with bipartisan support in both the House and the Senate uh, members. And so I do ask for this committee's um, approval, uh, uh, support of this bill as well. Ms. Lincheski, would you like to come forward? No, no need? All right, perfect. <laughs> um, members, is there any further discussion to the bill as amended? Seeing none, would you like to re re renew your motion that the House File 2950 as amended be re-referred to the General Register? Yes, Madam Chair, that is my motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion prevails and House File 2950 as amended is re-referred to the General Register. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Sir? Representative Freiburg, would you like to come forward? Welcome. Since you are a member of the committee, would you like to um, move House File 2204? Sure. I will. Is this going to the General Register? I believe okay. it goes to the yep. General Register. I will move House File 2204 to the General Register. Okay. And you have an amendment? Yep. Uh, the A3 amendment just fills in the dates and uses the maps that we'd uh, like to use. Okay. So I'd, I would move the A3 amendment. All right. Um, all those in favor of adoption of the A3, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the um, amendment is adopted. <clears throat> all right. To House File 2204 as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the legislature is required by statute to develop new districts for the Met Council in every year ending in a three. Um, after both the decennial census and congressional and legislative redistricting have been completed. Uh, the purpose of Met Council redistricting is to equalize the Metropolitan Council district populations uh, following the past decade of population expansion. And between 2010 and 2020, uh, the metro region's population expanded by 11%, so redistricting addresses that growth in drawing the new districts. Um, based on this, each metropolitan district should contain approximately 1 16th of the Twin Cities metro region, or 197,251 people. Uh, these maps were developed with a couple principles in mind. Um, one goal was keeping communities of interest together. So generally speaking, suburbs, exurbs, and core cities are not in districts with each other except where it's necessary to maintain approximate population equality among districts. Um, and on that note, population equality was another goal. The average deviation in district size is 0.85%, um, and the district with the largest deviation under these, this map is 1.65%. Another goal was not splitting up cities um, unless it's unavoidable. Um, and under this map, split cities include Edina, Maplewood, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Woodbury. A uh, final goal was relative stability with the existing districts. Um, you have a copy of the map in your packets. Um, it's, it's in color, it looks like this. Um, and, it's, and it's also been posted online for a few days, so you should have uh, been able to check it there. And if you'd like more detail, uh, you can get a map of each individual district as well as the whole metro region if you go to the LCC website. Um, so that's, that's what this bill does, and uh, happy to answer questions. I don't know if anyone's here to testify on it. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak to House File 2204? No? You're good? Okay. Members, do you have any questions? Representative Nadeau. Good morning, Madam Chair. And I, I just, uh, I'm a little tired this morning. Really? But I just wanted to thank Representative Freiberg for the hard work that he did. This is a good map. This is, as much as I don't like, you know, the Met Council some days, this is a good map. So thank you. Any other questions? Representative Hansen, did you want to say no, thumbs up? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, I will, or I'll let you renew your motion that House File 2204, as amended, be re-referred to the General Register. Uh, I will quit while I'm ahead and make that motion. So right. thank you, members, for your time. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Hearing none, the motion prevails and House File 2204 as amended is re-referred to the General Register. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. Okay. Our last bill of the day will be Representative Hornstein. And this is House File 2092. I, since you are not a member of this committee, I will move that House File 2092 be re-referred to transportation. transportation. Thank you. Uh, the bill is now before us. Would you like to speak to the A2 amendment? Yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Members, the A2 is just um, a technical correction that uh, uh, House research um, found in the uh, original bill, and uh, there'll be some potential other amendments that we'll do back in transportation that I've discussed with the chair. And um, Madam Chair, just to confirm, you felt those were more appropriately done there. They're, they're not major, uh, but we will do those there and um, obviously be in touch with the, the leadership of this committee about those. And I've spoken with lead uh, Actually, I spoke to Representative Kosnick about it. Uh, one of the things I'd like to see is that the public members be paid a per diem. Yeah. Um, and uh, with that, members, uh, is there any discussion to the A2? All right. All those in favor of the adoption of the A2, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion prevails and the A2 is adopted. Um, now to House File 2092 as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I really appreciate you and the committee considering this bill. Um, uh, as uh, you may have known, uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, um, uh, issues around metropolitan governance have been uh, at the forefront, I think, uh, on the legislative agenda and, and minds of many legislators on, from both parties. Um, I would say more so than in uh, the 20 plus years I've served in this body. Um, as a former member of the Metropolitan Council, I have supported electing the Met Council um, or uh, some kind of governance reform. Uh, it won, one biennium, I've, uh, I, I did one that uh, proposed a COG, a Council of Governments. Um, but generally, I've been in support of an elected Met Council uh, and have most of the uh, biennia I've served here introduced that <coughs> bill. Um, and I introduced that bill uh, again this, uh, this year. Um, but as I talked with members, and I, I would again emphasize that um, the passion and interest and commitment to reform and restructuring, I, I have not detected that level uh, in 20 years plus. Uh, but I would also say there's no consensus. There's a lot of passion, but no consensus around how to do that. And so rather than moving forward uh, with a direct election approach, which was the original House File 2092, uh, I have opted for a task force on metropolitan governance and, and ran this idea uh, by both the chair and, and lead Nash. And I want to thank both of you for our very productive and helpful conversations. Now, as I said in uh, transportation, um, we're getting ready to celebrate a Passover Seder here in a couple of weeks. And uh, the Seder starts with a question, why is this night different from all other nights? So I will start a, a question about this bill by saying, why is this task force different from all other task forces? Because we've had a number over the years. The Citizens League had one. Uh, the governor appointed one. Uh, there might have been a, a couple of others here and there. They've all come up with the same conclusion. The Metropolitan Council should stagger terms of gubernatorial appointees. I feel we can do more and better than that. And so, um, uh, you know, I've listed a number of options here in the bill uh, for a task force to consider. Uh, but this task force is different for two main reasons. Uh, number one, it is legislatively <coughs> led. Uh, and uh, we will have an equal number of uh, members uh, from both parties at the suggestion of, of uh, Lead Nash. Uh, and um, and it, it is legislatively led with a legislative outcome. And that legislative outcome, as I uh, perceive it, uh, and I hope that members of the task force and, and this committee would perceive it, 
is that we come together next year and uh, you know, be, during 2024, this legislature will discuss the recommendations of this task force and act on them before Sine die. And so that is why this task force is different from all other task forces. And I do believe it will result in a significant uh, and important and urgent restructuring of the Metropolitan Council. Regional governance is very important, as you know, in this committee of jurisdiction and it needs to be transparent and accountable and that's the path I hope that House File 2092 uh, leads us to. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I have had testifiers in the past, but uh, no one really on short notice uh, has come in support of this. But uh, I would, uh, if the committee is interested, um, one of our former colleagues, Myron Orfield, uh, has studied this issue extensively and uh, testified on the record in transportation, also in a uh, informational hearing on uh, the predecessor of this committee, it was called local government, one of the predecessors of this committee last year was called local government, he testified in an informational hearing there last year. So I would just refer members to his testimony if you wanna learn a little bit more about uh, why I feel so passionately about this. Okay, and Ms. Nauman is listed as a testifier for today. If you would like to come forward, please. <coughs> if you'll state your name for your record, for the record and present your testimony, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, again, Patricia Nauman with Metro Cities. Thank you for the opportunity to comment today on House File 2092. And I do appreciate um, the work by Representative Hornstein to pull back from an elected Metropolitan Council bill, which was the original bill. I do just also want to acknowledge and appreciate the inclusion of city perspectives on the task force. Um, cities do, just by virtue of what I talked about even earlier with the bill, um, are responsible for most of the implementation of regional policies, and so they, um, their voices are, are very important to this work. And I also just want to acknowledge um, that as the task force gets underway, and I did hear what uh, Representative Hornstein remarked on with respect to this being a legislative task force, but there have been recent um, substantial task forces and studies that have been conducted by a variety of groups with the wide cr cross section of stakeholders, um, including Metro cities that have had more or less consensus positions on this issue. And I would hope that those would be considered and certainly would encourage that as this task force gets underway. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. I always appreciate hearing Thank your you. voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and with that members, is there lead Nash? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and Chair Hornstein, you and I have had many uh, productive conversations uh, on this and uh, have been able to uh, have leveraging our friendship to, to be both collegial and critical of, of really what we're looking at. The Met Council, I think I, I just looked, every one of us on this committee either lives in or uh, serves an area that is in uh, the Met Council's purview. And there is not, I would argue, one of us who have not heard some grave concerns about how things are going. Um, and I, in years past, I have authored bills that uh, Chair Hornstein and I talked about some of the virtues and lack of virtue in some of them. And we've gone back and forth, and I think a lot of us have had met council bills. But I, I, I like this approach because now we're going to get an equal number of us in a room, uh, at least from the legislative perspective, we'll have equal number of Republicans and, and Democrats and that's important because Republicans and Democrats are both living in the Met Council's purview. And I think that it is time for, for some um, oversight. And I think some of the recent OLA reports would, would absolutely make that a concrete uh, agreement amongst us. And it is time for, for there to be uh, some edits to the to the story of the Met Council. So I am I, I I have added on to the bill. I think I was gone the day that you had the jackets, or I would have signed on. But I think that this is a very good step forward. It does not say drastic overreaction. Uh, the chair and I sat in a a commission on metropolitan governance meeting. I think that was five or some odd years ago when we were in lockstep talking about the fact that. Um, for the Southwest LRT tracks being uh, put right next to condominiums that they were pile driving. And you and I both looked at each other like, 
that's not going to end well. And we both basically made the comment of, that's not going to end well. And turns out we were right. So I think that, that, that it is time for some change. This is a very measured and balanced approach, and I wholeheartedly support it. Thank you. We have two more members who would like to comment. Um, Representative Freiberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, a question. Was this, this is being referred back to transportation? transportation. That's, that's good. I mean, as long as um, just a couple, I just have sort of a couple questions slash Please, suggestions as, you know, since this is getting another committee stop. So um, there seems to be kind of a, a focus here on the Met Council's uh, duties over transportation and regional transit. Um, and certainly that's been in the news for not very good reasons lately, but the Met Council does have other duties that it's in charge of. Um, it's in charge, you know, it, it focuses on <coughs> regional planning, it focuses on regional parks, it focuses on wastewater infrastructure for the regional uh, metropolitan area. So, I mean, I noticed the bill, um, you know, it appoints the chairs and ranking members of the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee and the state and local government finance and policy, and those are certainly logical choices. Um, it, it, uh, it appoints one person representing transit appointed by Move Minnesota. I think that makes sense. I just um, don't necessarily, you know, as long as we're going to change, looking at changing the whole overall structure of the Met Council, I don't want to lose sight of those other duties that the Met Council has. So, you know, like the wastewater one has been a very important one in my community. Um, so I don't know if it, you know, I don't know if it would be appropriate to consider th that, you know, the legislative members include a member of uh, Chair Hansen's committee as well, um, just uh, because of the importance of the wastewater issue to, uh, to the environment. Um, so that that's that's one thought I hope so Chair Hornstein you'd consider as this, as this goes forward. Um, you know, I think uh, Ms. Nauman's comments about the importance of cities is another important one. There's certainly, you know, there's seven counties in the metro area. I don't even know how many cities there are. I suspect it's around 100. So I don't know if a two and two is, uh, is the perfect balance, but I think that would be something to look at. And then the, um, you know, I appreciate your comments about the staggered terms. I, I, I do think, you know, and the duties listed in subdivision four talk about direct election. It doesn't actually mention that. I, I still think it, it's worth looking that at that as a possibility. So you know that would be another thing I think could be could be considered in here too. So just uh, food for thought as this moves forward. But uh, appreciate your work on it, Chair Hornstein. Thank you, um, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, Representative Freiberg is a very wise man, and uh, the waste uh, water as well as the parks I think would be important at a minimum, maybe including the reporting back to the uh, environment committees of jurisdiction as well. Uh, and I'm just looking, I'm not sure if it's got something about compensation of trying to determine the accurate compensation that should occur for Met Council members. I think that should be part of the consideration. Okay. Then, um, Representative Harder. Thank you, Chair Cleveland. Uh, Representative Hornstein, mine's just more of a comment or take it under advisement. And uh, in this bill, I like the word reform. Uh, when I went, um, most of the people that I serve are on the uh, west side of, of the Met Council. And I just let you know that when I went door knocking, there wasn't one person that wasn't, uh, had anything positive to say about the Met Council. So I hope that the reform and the new structure that you have here can uh, help the people of my district. That's just under advisement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Representative Nadeau. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Hornstein. Um, I, I, I was, I was kind of going where Representative Freiberg was when I was looking at this and thinking, you know, maybe there needed to be, you know, more because of, you know, it's not just, it's not just, uh, you know, wastewater. It's parks and, you know, it's, it's the Land Planning Act. And then I started realizing that it would get too big, and I've, I think all of us have worked on parts of trying to reform the Met Council over the years, and I, I think you've got it right. I think, I, think you've got, I think you've got this right focused on governance. And then, you know, that body will then take in all that information on those system plans and, and the work that gets done. Um, with all due respect, I just think it would get too, I, I think it'll get too big and too heavy and too hard because um, I think focusing on the governance, I think is the, is the right approach. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Nadeau. Um, I'll add my two cents, if you don't mind. Um, as I was looking at this um, as well, and I appreciate the time that you spent talking to me uh, about this bill before you brought it forward. 
And um, in listening to uh, Chair Freiberg, I thought about this as well. Housing, housing is a huge part of what they do. So maybe as you're thinking about whatever amendments you may bring in transportation, to add a line that says the uh, task force must, and make it a must, receive input related to parks and trails, aviation systems, yep. right? Uh, housing, transportation, so that we're sure that all areas of the Met Council are heard from. Uh, not just the Met Council, but entities that relate to the work that the Met Council does. And with that uh, very same thing, I, I had it that, because this is really about governance, right? Um, I don't know why the chamber would be um, a member um, because I think it really is about city, the government entities that interact with the Met Council. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have a voice in the conversation, right? I think it's important that you consult with business and the impact that the Met Council has. But um, I think the task force really should be focused on governance, right? And so just as um, you would invite other voices to this conversation, I think the chamber being invited to have their voice heard is important, but I'm not sure that they need to be a member of the task force. So that's my, those are my recommendations. And with that, members, is there any further discussion? Thank you. Would, would you like to wrap up the bill? Yeah, well, thank you so much. This I was taking lots of notes, and uh, I, I think the value, uh, I, I very much value the input of this committee. And we heard it in transportation that's going back there. I think the plan would be to include it in our uh, omnibus bill now that it's been heard in both committees of jurisdiction. Um, but I think that we do have an opportunity to make some changes and some additions, some amendments, you know, based on the conversation here. And uh, we'll have a chance to look at this on the floor and, and make any other adjustments then. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, the time has come to do this. And um, I'll just uh, end with, uh, you know, something I've, I've always remembered. Um, you know, freshman year, or first year I was here, um, we were in the minority in the, in the DFL. This was 2003, and I, I did learn pretty early on that if you want a, a bill to move, uh, give it to someone in the, the majority. And so at that time, um, I, I uh, had a conversation with uh, a member, Karen Cleansing, who represented Woodbury at the time, and she was very interested in this. And so she took, took on the bill, had a hearing in the uh, state and local government committee, and I just remember um, attending that hearing, and she brought some, you know, uh, American flags and other uh, patriotic uh, symbols to the hearing. And she just kept saying over and over, no taxation without representation. And, you know, if I were to boil down why we need governance reform uh, here, I, and this is where I lean to sort of the elected official approach, whether it's, you know, county commissioners, appointees, and commissioners, appointees, and elected officials, elected officials, whatever the combination is, I do feel that we need to have some direct accountability to the electorate here. And so that is, again, one perspective. There's many ways to incorporate that no taxation without representation moniker in, in reform, uh, but I, I feel that's really what's driving me at this point. So thank you very much for your consideration. Um, uh, Madam Chair, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you so much, Chair Hornstein. And with that, I will re-refer House File 2092 as amended to the Transportation Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion prevails, and you are on your way back to Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and members. Um, members have a good weekend. Thank you so much. Before we leave, I want to make sure that I haven't aired. Um, uh, Mr. Gehring. Uh, in thinking about the redistricting map, uh, House File 2204, I just want to make sure that I did this correctly. Because the A3 references the map, I do not need to have a motion that the map itself be adopted. Is that correct? All right. Then we're in great shape. All right. I just want to verify before we go. Um, members, with that, our business today is concluded. Thank you so much for your flexibility in coming today. We are.